Hi, I'm Rich Bennett, President and CEO of Life Network. You know, one of my favorite days of the year is the Walk for Life. The last couple years, more than 2,000 of you have gathered together to show that you value life and that you care about moms, dads, babies, and students in our city. Well, this year, necessarily, the walk is going to look a little different. It's going to look like this. We're going to walk together, but apart, but still show that we value life. And then on that Saturday, we'll do a live online virtual event. Tune into our Facebook page, check our website, and share videos and photos just like this of you walking and showing your commitment to life. Visit walkforlife.com, sign up, and it makes it easy to raise funds online through email, through social media, through the tools that you'll find there. Won't you join us Saturday, June 6th, as together we do our first ever virtual walk for life.
defend us with power into the world. Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, fill us with fire and love for the world. Sing it, oh, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts, send us with power into the Fill us with fire and love for the world. We are gathered in your name with expectancy and faith. We are waiting. We are waiting. Give us boldness to proclaim all the wonders of your grace. We are ready.
morning, family and friends. Whitta Dickerson, we're going to pray. We're going to pray for our leaders as they prepare to uh, reopen our churches. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you and give you glory today. We thank you for our pastors and leaders, even now as they're contemplating and planning ahead and navigating uh, to reopen the house of God. God, we thank you that you're going to provide them with the wisdom, the know-how, the insight, the revelation. And God, you have a blueprint. Even for Antioch, Lord, there is a blueprint you have Pacific uh, for our pastor, Pastor Jade and Pastor Christy and the staff. And so, Lord, we thank you for, for for providing uh, that wisdom. And we thank you, Lord, for activation of that wisdom. And so, God, we bless them, Lord, with the wisdom of heaven, the wisdom of God to excel in that, that, that endeavor. And so, God, we touch and agree, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Can we say the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Okay. Our Father. Our Father. Word in heaven. Word in heaven. How will be your name? Will be your name. Your kingdom come. Say it out loud. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. It's in heaven. Good. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. And forgive us our sins. As we forgive those, we forget those who sin against us. Who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us on temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. For never and ever. Amen. Say, we love you, Antioch Church. We love you, Antioch Church. This is part of our service where we honor the Lord with our giving this morning. Wherever you are today, I want to invite you to just to pause with us. Now, I know for me, I'm giving in a different way. So I'm giving via text or online, and it takes a little bit. It can take a little bit of the meaningfulness out of the giving act. And what we're hoping to do as we record this for our video services is it gives us an opportunity, even if you've given earlier in the week or even if you're going to give later this week, it gives us an opportunity right now just to pause and say, Father, everything that we have comes from you. And we're so grateful for the fruit of our labor that we can bring to you as worship and honor, whether that be in the form of a tithe or whether that be in the form of an offering. Right now, I want to invite you to pray together with me out of a heart of gratitude, out of a heart of worship and obedience as we just say, Father, we're giving back unto you what you've blessed us with. So I want to invite you to read this prayer in the form of a prayer. Just pray this together with us, this giving liturgy. God is the source of our lives and the giver of all good things. All that we have comes from his generous hand. We give today in worship, faith, and obedience, trusting that God will receive the fruit of our labors and bless the world. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human hearts into ruin and pierces it with many grief. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds and willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves a treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. Amen. Thank you for your giving, friends. God bless you. Good morning, Antioch. It's so great to be with you guys here on May 17th. Can you believe here we are again for another video service? I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some live services with everyone in the same room with the whole band. And I can't wait. So uh, please be praying. Continue to be praying for that time to come quickly. Be praying for us to have wisdom 
as we are right now in the process of thinking through how do we make the necessary changes, take the necessary precautions when we all come back. I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up right now that things won't be exactly as they were mm -hmm. before all of this took place, but we are praying and thinking through uh, what are those services going to look like. And I do plan on giving you guys an update uh, sooner than later on when we can get back together. As soon as we know, we're going to make sure that all of you guys know. Uh, that being said, we are looking forward to jumping into a really, really rich passage today. Uh, we took a little bit of a hiatus last week when we jumped into Luke. And actually, that wasn't last week. That was like weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> last week was Mother's Day, and we hit John chapter 14, the first part of this. And we are hitting John chapter 14, verses 15 through 23 today. <laughs> right? 21. John chapter 14. Oh, 21. Well, 21. let's read through 20. <laughs> we should read through 23. 22 and 23 get no love. <laughs> they don't. They get no love. Just like no. Judas. Judas yes. gets no love. So um, we're going to talk about Judas today. Are we? <laughs> verse 22 is about Judas. Oh, we're just going to read through verse 21. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we are keeping this. Please don't edit any of this out. This is, this is good. This is real life, y'all. This is real stuff. Here to bring a little joy into your families <laughs> right now. Maybe we should pray. <laughs> I was like, I don't care what he says. Edit that out. <laughs> oh, that man. That was funny, though. All right. Hey, what? grab your Bibles. John chapter 14. Father, thank you for this time. And thank you for the joy of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for life in the Spirit. And thank you, Father, for all of our friends and family right Amen. now that are joining in with us, with their kids running around all over the house, in their PJs, breakfast table, still got stuff all over it. It's beautiful. It is just amazing. And um, Father, thank you for all the sweet little kisses that we've all been experiencing. Lord, help us to find those sweet little kisses in the midst of what could be really, really some depressing and disorienting and disappointing moments. So, Father, help us to find where you are present and where you are at work and where you are just showering us with love and grace. And, Father, today we just invite the ministry, the presence, and the power of your Spirit on our time as we jump into the Word together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Right, right on, on time. Woo! He's a right on time guy. <laughs> Except for when he's not. I'm just following in his footsteps. No, yes. <laughs> John chapter 14, <clears throat> verse... 15. Here we go. If you love me, keep my commands. I am reading out of the NIV. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Mm -hmm. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Verse 20, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Jonathan, you seem to have about, a we're little We're going to talk about of, the Holy Ghost. Yeah, oh, I cannot wait. Love me some Holy Ghost. <laughs> but before we but do. But before we do that. But before we do. <laughs> so this is part of a really long discourse that Jesus is talking to. His but not too long. You're making it sound so somber. It's really, really long. long. It's really long. <laughs> It's almost so long, you can't even read it in one sitting. It's just oh it's five, six pages. How long exactly is it? It's so, 13 through so 17? 13 through 17. Okay. So 13 through 16 is Jesus teaching and making promises and, and reiterating all of the things that he's already been talking about and revealing and showing. And then 17, of course, turns to intercession, which we'll talk about next week. But a couple of things to keep in mind, uh, just partly about this passage in particular, and then we'll start with the book of John. So we've spent a lot of time in the book of John. Some things worth noting. One is that John emphasizes the relationship between Jesus and the Father more than any of the other Gospels. I think Jesus uses the word for Abba uh, 
more than all in the book of John, more than the other three Gospels combined. So John is really trying to hone in on the relationship yes. in the Trinity. Yes. And we know at the end of John, he tells us that all of these signs and things were recorded so that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So yes. we know his goal, his objective. He's trying to reveal and to prove almost. He's, he's making an argument so that they will see this is not just a prophet. This is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. This is the promised Messiah. So let's keep that in mind that the life of God, Jesus as the one who is one with the Father, who is in the Father, who is sent from the Father, the Spirit who will be introduced here in just a moment. But the relationship in the Godhead is a huge thing. And what we're going to see partly here and then also partly next week is that Jesus is talking to the disciples about how they will then be drawn into that, yes, same, relationship, that same relationship, that same life. Yes, so, so that's part of it. And then the other thing is John is doing something different altogether. It, John's gospel has been called the theological gospel. He's so the, rogue. He, he is. He went on off on his own. <laughs> he couldn't have just done what the other three did. He, <laughs> So, so John has the other three Gospels. They, his was definitely written after. And the other three Gospels, in their own way, are all telling the story of Jesus seemingly as it happens. John's Gospel starts completely differently. Totally. We know this. Yeah. John is less telling the story and than he is providing a perspective for the whole rest of the story, which we read in the other three Gospels. So good. So it's right from the get-go. John is telling us... <clears throat> Jesus is the one who created the whole world, the cosmos. He was here present in the beginning. So John is less concerned with the chronology of events than he is about revealing once again the same thing. Who is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. Yes. And he tells us that right up front in the first chapter. He starts making this argument. So we come to this passage knowing these things, that John is... He's writing this, constantly trying to prove that Jesus is speaking to the disciples in a way that reveals He is the Messiah. And He reveals He is the one sent from God. There's never before been anyone like Jesus, so good. Yeah. and there is no subsequent to Jesus. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so then we come to this chapter, chapter 14, which you preached on last week. And it's so at the, powerful. it was so powerful. It's earth shattering. I was I had to actually leave the sanctuary. I just I couldn't stand it. I was gonna have to start shouting. I am a Pentecostal, so That's, Amen. Amen. I'm just gonna keep pulling that out of you. Just it is. Yes. Pull it out. We're about to talk about the Holy yeah. Ghost here. <clears throat> I need you to so, quicken a little bit for me. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. <laughs> so where this discourse is situated in the timeline is right smack dab in the middle of the Holy Week, which mm. is chronologically, as I've already said, John's not really concerned with telling the events in the actual order that they happened. These events happened, certainly. Yes. But John situates this right before the cross, right before the Passion. And it seems like Jesus is preempting knowing that the disciples are about to be discouraged, lonely, abandoned. Yeah. Wondering, you know, he says, I will not leave you, I will as, not orphans. Leave you as orphans. So he, it's like Jesus is anticipating all of these things about to happen. So Jesus is reiterating things that he's been teaching and telling the disciples for years, but he knows one more time, I'm going to say these things again. And hopefully in the coming days, you will remember them, that you will remember, I have promised an advocate that I have not left you as orphans, that there is more to this life when it seems oh, like I am crucified, so which of good. course he was crucified, yes. that the story doesn't end there. Mm -hmm. So all of this is an anticipation of the disciples being confused and lonely and feeling abandoned and feeling, asking questions and doubting and all yeah. of this. So oh, that's some of the context, just setting this up. It's incredible. No joke, man. That's so good. <laughs> Thank I you. had this funny thought as you were sharing. And it was, what if I choked on my coffee and spewed it all over the place? It was so, that's so random. And then I thought, this is a really ugly mug. I don't, happen. I want a different mug for next week. Next video. week we'll go back to that's the That's what I thought. I know, the story. this is just kind of bland. Anyways, those are the random thoughts so that bland. run through my head. But I was paying attention to you. It was really, really Clearly. Good. No, <laughs> seriously, it was so good. I am able to multitask. Mentally. Yes, you are. Okay, as I'm reading these short verses here, yes. these six verses, 
uh, there's a few words that come to mind. Number one, relationship. Yes. Number two, promise. And number three, spirit. There's other words that we could utilize. Yeah. Obviously, as you mentioned, the Trinitarian reality is so Ooh. strong here. What, why'd you, why'd I you, said, ooh, Trinitarian, five dollar word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't even know how to break that one down. Uh, <clears throat> but look at verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. And then again in verse 21, so he brackets this, mm-hmm. this little, I'm going to use this word for Lauren, pericope. You like mm. that? That's a five dollar word. That I'm is. just going to br- break these, this passage down here at the very top, bookending it with, if you love me, keep my commands. Verse yeah. 21, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Mm-hmm. The one who loves me would be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. I know that you have a unique perspective there, which I want to hear. Uh, I just want to hit this just from the vantage point of um, a legal obedience, right? Mm-hmm. Versus obedience that's birthed out of love. Right, yep. And in my earlier years, before I really understood the nature of the Father's love, the nature of sonship mm-hmm. and daughterhood uh, in the Christian faith, uh, these, these words were very, in some ways, they were a little obligatory, mm-hmm. right? And if I didn't obey, then in, in my mind and in my heart as I reason that out, uh, just, I'm just not loving hard enough. I'm not mm-hmm. loving well enough. There was this contractual thing that was yeah. going on inside of me that in a lot of ways produced a lot of guilt, mm-hmm. a lot of shame. And as I look at this now, though, I'm looking at this with fresh eyes. And what was very helpful, honestly, is to read in one of my studies here, is that the word if you love me, why are you giggling over no, here? I, yeah, I, if, if you love me really could be translated like when you love yes. me, right? So mm-hmm. it's not this if then conditional clause right. as much as it is out of the overflow of our love for the Father, out of our over, overflow of our love for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Obedience is the natural thing that will follow. Absolutely. Right? And so it's not a law based approach to mm-hmm. any of the scriptures, any of the commands. Uh, any of the words of Jesus, it is, Jesus, I love you, right? Grow my love for you. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways that I can demonstrate uh, my love for you is out of love and from the place of love and from the place of your love. Yes. That willing obedience then follows. Absolutely. Well, one thought I had as you were speaking is about how Paul, I believe in one of the Corinthian books, talks about how he was... He was the most zealous, that he followed the law to the T. Yes. And also in Romans, we read about how the law, even if followed perfectly, does not bring about life. Yeah. There is a way that we can obey, and it's not rooted, and I love how you said, so from our love, which really is coming ultimately from the Father's from the love Father's for us. the Father's love, yes. Because we know that the goal is not to just cross the T's and dot the I's and, and do the right things. God wants us, of course, to do the right things, but in participation with Him, because yeah. God doesn't need us to get His bidding done. God right. wants to be on mission with us because He loves us. Mm-hmm. And so if we do all the right things, but we're just doing them because we're cowering in fear right. or trying to earn or whatever, I, I don't think that that's what's pleasing God. Absolutely. I think what pleases God is when we respond to His love in kind. In kind. And so. it goes back, I think, to the context that you were setting up there. Jesus wasn't pointing His finger and saying, guys, now I'm going to be taken off. And now there's this oppressive, like, mm-hmm. you better be doing what's right. No, yeah. listen, I'm going to yeah. send I you. I teed it up for you. Yeah, I teed don't it up for it up. you. Don't mess this whole thing up, yeah. right? I don't want to come back and do this all over again. <laughs> no, he's saying, I'm going to give you my spirit. I'm going right. to give you the spirit of truth, another advocate, another helper, which we'll get to mm-hmm. in a minute. I just want to read the verses that you referenced, if mm-hmm. I could, sure. here in Philippians chapter 3. And I think um, just putting our eyes on this, just to, you know, Uh, punctuate what you said there. Philippians chapter 3, and uh, we'll start with verse 3. It is we who are the circumcision. It is we who serve uh, God by His Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks that they have reasons to put confidence, confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, 
persecuting the church as for righteousness based on the law, faultless, right? Faultless. But then he goes on to say, whatever was a gain to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And what is more, I consider everything a loss compa- compared, um, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And gosh, look at that contrast there mm-hmm. from obedience, from the motivation of saying, I've done it all. I've right. done a great job. I've fulfilled the law. I've fulfilled yes. the obligations. I'm the man, right? Yep. Versus, Jesus, I want to know you. Mm-hmm. And there is a knowing you that can only come from getting into the wisdom of what you're saying and obeying from the heart. Mm-hmm. And man, let, let us be after that. Yeah. Yeah. I have little to add. I think that's fantastic. Oh, man. Well, going back to John chapter 14, let's take a look at the advocate. Ooh. The advocate. Also known as? (laughs) Yes, right. (laughs) Over and over and over again. Uh, Comically, you say that, but the Greek word there is paraclete, Mm -hmm. the paraclete. And it's been translated so many different ways Mm -hmm. from the helper to the comforter. Yep. To the advocate, do you have any more? This is like Bible trivia right now. <laughs> uh, the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Let's see. Um, <laughs> true friend. True friend. Yes. Yes. By yeah. old Dale Bruner. Well, thank you, Dale Bruner. <laughs> I think he was actually quoting Eugene Peterson, wasn't he? I think he was. Yeah. So Eugene, in his message translation, takes this idea of the Paraclete, which just essentially means the one who was called alongside. Yeah, comes alongside. The one yeah. who comes alongside, and. Isn't that just so beautiful, so yes. rich, mm-hmm. right? And each of these words, they're, they're a little uh, unilateral or they're a little limited. Yes. Yeah, advocate has a real like courtroom yep. feel to it, mm-hmm. which again, if we take that idea, okay, the Holy Spirit is here to advocate yeah, on our behalf, to fight, on our, yeah, behalf. To fight mm-hmm. on our behalf, to defend, to protect. Then we have comforter, which is a nuance of mm-hmm. paraclete. So to your point, man, the disciples are anxious, they're fearful. They're feeling rejected. They're feeling abandoned. Hey, no, listen, the Holy Spirit in those moments is called one who's called alongside of you to comfort you yep. in those moments. Helper, mm-hmm. right? Who doesn't need help? I need help <laughs> daily, yes. right? I need help right now. <laughs> yes. Lord, help me, right? And the Holy Spirit is present to help us in our weakness. But this true friend that Eugene Peterson uses and Dale Bruner then, you I know. it's beautiful. It is beautiful mm-hmm. because a true friend in, in the healthiest, truest spirit sense of the word, is all of these things. Right. A true friend is going to be present. A true friend is going to convict us of sin. Mm-hmm. A true friend is going to fight on our behalf. A true friend is going to call us up higher, comfort us, right. never abandon us, right? Mm-hmm. And man, this is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Isn't it interesting, though, that Jesus says, I'm going to give you another. Yeah. What's going on with that? Well... I think what's implied is that Jesus was this, and now the Spirit is coming along to do a similar, almost the same thing, Mm -hmm. but not in a way of replacing Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like the Spirit comes to continue, I think is probably the best word. Yes. The Spirit comes to continue the work of Jesus in the Spirit's way. The same work in the same Spirit, right? Yeah, in the same Spirit. Yeah, and just before this is, of course, the famous passage where Jesus is saying, you will do greater things than me. Yes. And there are various interpretations there. And then later in this, Jesus will say, it's better that I go away. So there are these ways that Jesus speaks to the work that we will do when he is ascended, post-resurrection, post-ascension, that alludes to the way that the Spirit is doing the same thing Jesus was doing in us, in the church, through us, through the church, and in the world on just a more massive scale. Mm -hmm. That the Spirit doesn't come with a new agenda. The Spirit doesn't come as part three. It's Mm -hmm. like not a plot shift. Mm -hmm. The Spirit Mm -hmm. comes to continue in the same Spirit of Christ. The way that Christ reveals the Father, now the Spirit reveals Christ, and through us, in us, in the church. So it's beautiful. It is beautiful. We can only do the things that we do because Because, Christ gave the Spirit. Because Christ gave the Spirit. Yep. And as you use that word scale, I was immediately uh, thinking about yesterday morning in men's prayer. Jeff led us in Mark chapter 6. 
So we had about 10 or 11 guys in the Zoom call, and we were praying, reading through Mark chapter 6, praying through Mark chapter 6. Man, those guys just had some rich, rich insights there. Uh, one of the insights that those guys had was Mark 6 starts off where Jesus is in his hometown and can do very few miracles mm, right. because of a lack of faith and a lack of honor. And then right after it says, right here in verse 4, Jesus said, A prophet's not without honor, except in his own hometown, among his relatives, in his own home. He could not do uh, any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few people. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Right after this, Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Then he calls the twelve, and he sends them out, gives them authority. And look how this ends in verse 13. They drove out many demons mm. and anointed with oil many people, and they healed them. And it's just to your point here on, in terms of scale, mm -hmm. that same right. spirit that was operating in Jesus, yeah. same Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. when Jesus, man, healed the sick, raised the dead, cleansed the leper, you know, anointed them, same spirit mm -hmm. has been poured out now yeah. on every person who calls Christ Lord. Yes. That's exciting. That's you and me. <laughs> That's you and me. That's you and me. More importantly, That's you. equally as important. <laughs> That's you. That's you. It's us. That's us. That's it's all us. of us. That's yeah. So this, another. This, this is us. An, <laughs> another advocate. Yes. The Spirit who continues the work of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Anywhere else you want to go with all this? <clears throat> well, I think just to look at verse 20, uh, on that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. And then, of course, you are, you've already read uh, verse 20 again, verse 21 again. So what is on this day? So it probably Jesus is alluding to either they're first seeing him mm -hmm. after the resurrection, yes. or one of those post-resurrection visits. Right. Jesus is saying, once, once I've walked through this and come out on the other side and you see me, then you will know. And I think you know, projecting into John 15 and John 16, which we're not going to read, uh, but most of us know a lot of the material there. I think it's really interesting that Jesus is saying, you will realize then, you know, John's goal, that I am the Son of God, yes. that I am the Messiah, and that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but he doesn't end there, and I am in you. And then he's already told them that the Spirit who is with them then will be on and in. I mean, and then we go into the Pentecost story here in just a couple of weeks. So there is this part of, the, of what the paraclete, what the advocate does, like that. that draws us into this life of God that makes this kind of loving obedience possible. Yeah. Because we can't will ourselves into no that. No way. Absolutely. And, and this passage and especially the vine and the branches passage, which is in the next chapter, I think is often read uh, in, through the lens of Jesus desires intimacy with us, yeah. which I think is 100% true. Mm -hmm. And then reading the rest of this passage, you really start to get into some of the missional component, especially into chapter 17, yes. where it is all about continuing the work, continuing yeah. the work. Oh, I love this. So I think we are remiss if we try and divide those and so separate good. those. Yeah. That when we are brought into the life of God, yeah. It is for communion and it is for mission. Yes. It is for intimacy and it is for participation. Absolutely. That when we try and separate those, we're off on a tangent. When we try, when we want to be siloed away yeah. into intimacy with Jesus yeah. in a way that doesn't affect the world and the people around us, That's so we're good. mistaken. And when we want to just work, up, then oftentimes we end up working apart from, apart that, from the love, the energy that comes from yeah. being intimate in communion with Christ yeah. through the Spirit. Right. So I just want to highlight that those oh two things, they cannot be divided, and they are both part of being brought into the life of God. The life of God is to reveal the love of God to the world. I love it. Like this is the mission of Jesus, and yes. this is now what we're brought into. So good, and I just cannot stop thinking about John chapter 20 that we just looked at a few weeks ago. You know, uh, Mary clings to Jesus mm -hmm. in the garden, and Jesus is like, hey, you can't cling to me. We got a bigger thing that's going on right. here, right? And I think we want to do that. We want to cling to Jesus mm -hmm. out of this sense of intimacy. Yep. 
But yet intimacy in God, true discipleship, true intimacy will always lead us to sharing and carrying the right. burdens of Jesus, which it's his, it's his mission. It's the Missio Dei. Right. It's the mission of God to bring all of humanity and the entire cosmos back into reconciliation with the Father. Mm -hmm. And then if you remember the John 20 passage where he shows up to his disciples, peace. So yeah. yes, we have peace, but now because we have peace, bring that peace right. to the world. Those you forgive, I forgive. And so we can never divorce intimacy yeah. and abiding with God uh, from the heart of God to see all of humanity experience that same level of love and relationship Amen. with the Lord. Bro, you crushed it today. You crushed it today. Man, we crushed it. We crushed it. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> man, that's so fun. Guys, we hope, hey, you crushed it. In fact, actually, this you is our... It. This is our commissioning word. Go crush it. All right. Uh, John chapter 14, 15 through 21. Such rich passages here that call us into greater intimacy, yeah. into greater love and devotion with Jesus, not out of a spirit of works, not out of a spirit of law and legality, but Jesus is saying, I'm going to put my spirit inside of you. Mm -hmm which is the spirit of intimacy and the spirit of mission. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit of Jesus. Friend, the spirit of Jesus himself dwells inside of you, calling you to greater love for God and greater love for the world. And we are praying today that this week you would experience that, that you would experience joyful obedience mm -hmm. that comes from the spirit of God living inside of you and that you would also encounter opportunities to share the love of God from the heart of God with the world around you. Friends, thanks for joining us. And now we invite you maybe to push pause, grab the elements, and I will see you at the table. Friends, thanks so much for joining us today at the table of the Lord. I want to reference a verse that we had read earlier in our discussion here in John chapter 14. Verse 20, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Aren't you so grateful that we have intimate communion and fellowship with God the Father? And really, as Jonathan mentioned earlier today, that we have intimate fellowship with the entire Trinity because of the work of Jesus on the cross and His resurrection and ascension. We've been invited in to that family and that fellowship today. And as we come to the table of the Lord, would you just take your elements in your hand as we pray over these today that the Holy Spirit would make these unto us, the body and the blood of Jesus. Let us set our heart and let us set our focus on how grateful we are that we have intimate communion with the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has invited us into that fellowship, invited us into that family by the brokenness of the body of Christ. So today, as I take the bread and we break it, symbolizing prophetically speaking. Boy, that is a massive piece of bread. It didn't quite break very uh, uh, evenly, but that's okay. We broke it. And take that bread in your hand. I know some of you are thinking, gosh, this is not somber enough. Friends, the table of the Lord doesn't always have to be somber. It doesn't have to be somber at all. We are celebrating today at this meal. We're celebrating our intimate fellowship with God. Take that bread in your hand if you would. Hold it in open hand, symbolizing that everything that we have has been given to us by grace and we posture our hearts to receive. Father, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Thank you that you empower us by your spirit, the paraclete, the advocate, the comforter. And as Eugene Peterson said, the true friend that you've given to us, dwelling within us now to draw us into that fellowship and that abiding communion. Friends, let us receive of the body of Christ today. It is so key that you don't eat too big of a piece because then it's just still there in your mouth when you're trying to go to the cup and we can't have that. So pause with me for one second as I continue to chew. Mm. Amen. Thank you. Let us take the cup now. Father, thank you so much for the blood of Jesus shed for us. Thank you for the work of Calvary, the work of the cross. Thank you again, Father, that you've made it possible for us 
to be beloved sons and daughters. I'm just reminded of that verse where Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but we have been called sons and daughters, beloved sons and daughters of the Most High God, invited into his family. And today we drink in celebration of our place at the table and of our role in the family of God. Friends, let us drink. Amen. God bless you, Antioch, and all of our friends who are joining us. We love you. May the joy of the Lord fill your lives and fill your homes and fill your families and your friendships. In Christ's name, amen.